Hi everybody, this is Ron Gadget Man, and today is, well, let's see, it's uh, January the 10th of 2011. In this video here, we're going to be talking just a little bit about uh, Debbie DeGogo in the Groove Tour 2012. Now, as many of you already know, that on March of 2009, I discovered this technology that's now called the Gadget Man Groove. Uh, because of the high level of skepticism, well, it's perfectly understandable, uh, there are a large number of cheats and thieves out there, whether they're well-intentioned or not, they have still delivered technologies that were not adequate to the task and didn't deliver as they were supposed to. Gage Man Groove is a little bit different from that. Uh, anyway, but it has a 100% effective rate on all vehicles. Now, in order to uh, overcome the native level of skepticism that's in the market, well, that's what the Gage Man Groove is intended to do. Uh, I've been here in Mesa and done the uh, done the Groove here for, uh, well, two and a half years, over two and a half years now, and done a number of events upon request by uh, various individuals, uh, well, you know, from mostly in California, and, but it's been a tremendous success, and so we want to take that success to you. Now, all of our gadgetmen in the network, well, they some of them, they have their own businesses and they're getting set up, and some of them are still doing it part-time. Well, this is going to be something intended to boost their uh, marketability of the product in their area and help them to find more and more people that are willing to accept the Gadget Man Groove as, as a viable method for increasing combustion efficiency in their vehicle. Now, what we're going to be taking with us on this tour, and it's going to be in the Watkins Glen Green Grand Prix, is what we call the Debbie to Go-Go. It's right over there. Now, this is the Debbie to Go-Go. Okay? Now, Debbie here is a 1985 uh, establishment RV. Let me back up here a little bit, see if I can get the whole thing in. There we go. Okay, now that's the Debbie to go go. That's a 28 foot motorhome manufactured by uh, uh, by uh, establishment on a Chevy chassis with a 454 carbureted engine. It's a 1985 model. Now, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take you around here and just show you a few of the little points that need to be fixed. Um, well, a, a few things I already have done. This bumper here, they had run into it and caused a, a severe push onto the front. And if you look here, the, all this trim right here is not settled in, and you can see the wrinkle right here. Now, what we're going to be looking to do is to try to get this repaired or dressed up as nicely as possible. All the trim, all these strips are going to be pulled and then uh, replaced with something a little bit better looking, maybe a little bit broader. But the vehicle is going to be body wrapped anyway. So you can see the spots where it's broken. It's got a couple of vents on the roof that are broken off also. Now, this is... All, none of the locks work for some reason, but now we're going to take a little walk inside, and we'll see. That, that actually, the repair on this is in, it's in really good shape. I'm going to start in the back, and then we'll go up to the front. A couple of latches are broken, like the one on the door. We uh, we just acquired a bed, so that Debbie and I will have some place to sleep along the road. Uh, this is our lovely little shower. There, and you see the vents going off of that right there. So we have to get two vents. Or actually, yeah, two vents and three shields for the vents so that they don't get ripped off in the process. Now this, this is my first RV, and so it's a learning process for me. And we've connected with uh, a couple of the uh, local manufacturers. Yeah, so we can't stamp that thing there. Oh, oh, you guys always get surprised with me, don't you? Anyway, uh, I've connected with uh, a couple of the guys from the local RV companies to ask for their help on this and of course we're going to we're going to mention their assistance on the on the graphics for the gauge for the for the body wrap anyway here's our little bathroom and that's the second bench you can see it's completely gone sit through the sky all right we gotta get that covered all right in the bathroom uh the water pump works the the main the main systems do work on this very well we've got our own little microwave there we go Okay, yeah, it'll be set up here somewhere. I think we'll put it on a shelf, maybe right there. But the cabinets, again, really nice and clean. Okay, the carpet's not, but we, we're going to fix that too. And there's our kitchen, we got water, uh, we've got, well, couch. Now, over here, we're going to put uh, a, uh, uh, a place for our computers and a chair. Of course, we've got the hookups for the tables. Now, as you can see here, there's a number of parts laying around. And the reason for that, if you don't know what those things are, those are rocker arms, push rods, head bolts, 
And of course there's the valve covers over there because it needs two new heads. Uh, right now they're in the shop seeing if they can't be repaired, but I don't know. This is a major job to undertake. But that, my friends, is a 454 cubic inch engine that is going to be taken to, uh, well, it's going to be taken to over 15 miles to the gallon. Now, also, you may notice that there's no passenger seat. That's something else we're going to have to locate. Uh, but fortunately, there's a place called Arizona RV Salvage that I think I'm going to go take a look at today, see if I can't find a seat that matches this, uh, that matches this one here. Now, if you guys have any experience in RVs at all, I'd really appreciate a call because uh, it's got an issue and I can't find the wiring. Uh, the fuel pump uh, the, re the the circuit breaker and the fuel pump keeps shutting down. Now to get this thing into the shop uh, it's going to cost uh, probably three or four thousand dollars just to get that part of it repaired. Just to drop the gas tank and inspect the fuel pump is over eight hundred dollars. And it, unfortunately it just now happens to be completely full of fuel because I started out going to do a mileage test when the issue developed. So let's go ahead and take a look around at, at the rest of the uh, at the rest of the RV. Alright, there's a shield, I forget what that covers, and then these panels down here for storage. Now this, uh, this, uh, the tip out, it's not a tip out, what do you call those things? Uh, anyway, but <laughs> the thing there, right there, uh, is going to be replaced with a nicer one, and uh, when the group, when it pops down, when it rolls down, uh, there's going to be a little, uh, little banner at the end of it that says, Gadget Man is here. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm excited. I really am excited. Now, here we see the back end. This ladder has been broken, all right, and it's really not safe to go up on. And apparently it's been smashed because you can see the crack in the uh, fiberglass. There, so that's going to have to be patched before we can get the groove done, right? Uh, all the locks are going to need to be replaced or repaired where I can get a magic key for it. There, as you see, is there temporary. Um, it's got to carry all up top and air conditioner and everything else. And yeah, there you can see she's uh, she's she's kind of homely right now, but we're going to give her such a facelift. This this uh, this awning that's what that's called. This awning here needs to be replaced. It's completely tore up on the inside there. Uh, and this door here does not work. Uh, I'm going to have to pull off the lock there and see what I can do to it. But all the tires look to be in good shape. The mirrors, they're not mounted well. And quite honestly, the, uh, the uh, plywood underneath them has uh, degraded quite a bit to where, you, you know, they don't even screw in there properly. Um, the front end, because of the warpage experienced in this area here, it's this, this hood doesn't even open correctly. Let's see, this one here. You can hear it dragging because the hinges are broken. That one there needs to be replaced. And this one over here, I have to, I have to reach up on the inside to get it to open up. And uh, that's all there is to it. Let's see here. Hold it up with that hand. And see, this hinge is completely broken also. And that's the main access. So I also need to get two more batteries. I've, I've got the one in there that will run it. And there's uh, two other batteries that power the subsystems and the um, the generator. So I haven't even been able to start the generator yet. They did tell me it worked, and I do believe them. They, they seem like such nice people. Uh, and uh, anyway, but this is this is what we've got right now. And but the warpage is a concern for me on the front. I do not know what to do about it. But I'll have a guy come by here pretty soon and take a look. So anyway, guys, just to get this thing up and running and to get the event uh, populated, just to get us rolling, we're looking at needing somewhere around, well, around $16,000. Now, the purpose of this is, once again, to introduce this technology all across the country. And we've already got a number of cities lined up. And we're going to be at the Watkins Glen Green Grand Prix on April the 20th and 21st of this year. Now, believe it or not, that thing right there, I'm, I'm, my goal is to have it somewhere between 15 and 30 miles to the gallon by the time the Green Grand Prix hits. Hard to imagine, huh? Well, it is for me, too. Uh, but I know it's doable with the groove, 
as you can see from consistent reports. Anyway, if you want to help this garage level tinkerer get a really world changing technology out there that's reducing CO2 emissions alone by as much as 95% on the vehicles on which it's been applied, then, and you want to help us maybe even get some businesses started with individuals, then, then, then I, I ask your help. If you can pitch in five bucks, ten bucks, fifty bucks, I promise you everybody's going to get compensated. I haven't decided exactly by what, but the more you give, the more I'll give in return, and that much you can bank on. If you don't know yet, you can already check out my, my integrity is very high, and when I make a promise, I keep it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say God bless you all richly and warmly and remember to smile for a stranger today. Man, this is going to be a great adventure um, because you will both be glad you did. Bye-bye now. <laughs>